The following is an encore presentation of stories from the Duralong Transformation Centre. As always, on Wednesday morning, we talk to one of the guys or gals from the Duralong Transformation Centre. I think you may have heard me say that today it's... It's Richard, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I had a, my mind went blank for a minute, but it's it's Richard from the Duralong Transformation Centre. So a very good welcome to you, Richard. First off, oh, are there any fires out there near Duralong? Are you sort of at risk out there? Uh, yesterday there was one that was um, about 29 kilometres away. It was uh, the big one on the central coast, but... I did hear this morning it was 19 kilometres away, so... It's getting a bit nearer, isn't it? Yeah, if it is. Yeah. Lots of smoke, then, if you were that close to the fires. We had smoke here, but you would have had it a lot worse, I imagine. Yeah, yesterday was really bad, but it was a bit uh, clearer this morning, thank goodness. Yeah, that's right. And I'm imagining the pool, because you've got um, a swimming pool there. I would imagine with the heat that we had yesterday, that gets a pretty good workout, the swimming pool. Yeah, it certainly does, on the hot days, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. How long have you been at Duralong, Richard? Since the 4th of September this year. Yeah, so that's not that's not a huge length of time, is it? No, not really. I've just gone to level two um, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So you're making progress then? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's yes. what we like to hear. Um, you from the Central Coast? I'm from up in Maitland, up in the Hunter Valley. Yeah, that sort of catchment area of Duralong, really. It's not far away, is it? No, no. no. We'll treat you as a, an honorary coastie for the day. Oh, That's thank you. <laughs> um, okay, what was it that brought you to do along? Was it drugs? Was it gambling? What was it? Al- uh, the alcohol issues. It was. Yeah, the alcohol issues. Yeah. And they have been in your life those addictions and those demons for many years. Yeah, for a long time. I'm uh, 58 now and picked my first drink up when I was 18. So yeah, it's been a That's long 40 years. Yeah. It? Yeah, it's a long time to be an addiction, Richard. It certainly is. You've had enough? Oh, I've had enough, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So turning the clock back to when you were 18 and you picked up that very first drink, little knowing what was going to happen, what sort of situation was that? Was it just party after or after work with mates? How uh, it, was m- it was more of... Um, to see what all my friends were raving on about. Uh, I was brought up in a really good home and... Um, yeah, hit 18 and thought, oh, I wonder what it's all about. So, yeah, um, yeah I uh, had my first drink, which made me really, really sick, and I was never going to touch it again, but <laughs> yeah. it didn't happen. No. As you say, you were brought up in a, in a good home, so you weren't drinking to forget stuff or to blot st- nasty stuff that was happening in your life. You, it was just experimentation. So uh, yeah, just experimenting and, yeah. Um, yeah, eventually it got hold of me, I suppose, yeah. three years later or something and, um, yeah, just continued uh, on a downhill spiral. As a healthy 18-year-old, it was almost expected by your mates that you would have a drink, wouldn't it? It was the norm. You'd have, People would have thought you were a bit odd if you didn't. Yeah, that's correct. It was um, just what you did when you were 18 and yes. working like, Oh, I deserve to drink of a weekend. And yeah, just I've worked hard all week. This y- is my pleasure. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But whereas your mates probably had it under control, you didn't. Did it become an addiction straight away for you or did it sort of creep up on you slowly? Uh, it did creep up on me. Um, I didn't think I had a problem, um, but... Uh, yeah, I was aware I uh, did seem to drink a lot more than um, my friend. Yeah, so you were aware of that. Had anybody else noticed that Richard's drinking a bit more than his friends? Yeah, mum and dad did, and um, yeah, they tried to talk to me about it, but I just uh, was in denial, I suppose. Yeah, didn't want to hear it either. No, no. Yeah, life was OK. I can cope. Uh, yeah, being <laughs> young and... Bit yeah. silly and young yeah. and bulletproof. Yes, yeah. we like to think of ourselves, but but no. So this was eighteen. You're fifty eight now. You've been forty years in addiction. What what sort of direction did your life take with this addiction in it? I um I've had three high range DUIs, um, but even that didn't really stop me drinking until the last one. Yeah. And it, it was just 
a lot of blackouts involved and a lot of wasted money and yeah just an awful way to live i'm sure some of our listeners are saying um look you had three duis surely after the first and certainly after the second surely you would have said to yourself hang on this is now becoming an issue i've got to do something about it but but that part of your brain didn't sort of remind you of that or say that to you um my first duii was um oh over 30 years ago and then um the last one was about um i think seven years ago or something like that right. and so I they were well spaced out these events uh, yes yeah i feel i should also ask and i know the answer to this question what was your occupation richard uh, i was the truck driver yeah um which i currently um have my license cancelled but yeah. i'll get it back in um about march next year i think so having a license it, 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 well, having a license is having a job. If you lose your license, you lose your job. But but still, even after the one or two DUIs, you didn't sort of seek help, even though your family were saying seek help. Oh, I did seek a little bit of help, but then I just um, chose to ignore it and pick up the drink again. Yeah. So what was different about the third time then? Third time, um. I had a car accident, I was the only one involved, thank goodness, and um, I thought it, and I just can't continue to live this way or I'll end up dead or in jail or something, and I just wanted to um, a, a new life uh, without up the drink. Right, so this is a moment of self-awareness for you. You now, you now accept it that you needed help? Yes, definitely. I was able to stop before but never stay stopped and I wanted long term rehab um, to ensure that I will stay stopped. Yeah. So what did you do? Did you get yellow pages out and start looking for rehabs? Did you take advice? What what happened? Um, my sister um, is a registered nurse who was working at Centrelink. Um, she's now retired but she um, advised me to find do along which I did and it was the best thing I could have ever done. Yeah. Um, we know of guys who've got in the very next day. We've known guys who've had to wait months and months. What, what happened when you rang and asked, can I have a bed, please? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it took me about six months to get in. Um, I was getting a bit frustrated towards the end of it, but um, I hung in there and... I uh, got in to do along on the 4th of September this year. During that long six month wait, did you ever think to yourself, oh, forget it, it's, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do it on my own. If, if I can't get into do along, yeah, just forget it, forget the whole thing. Uh, yeah, I did have those thoughts, but um, I'm glad I persisted in phoning and uh, got in. Yeah. Did you know anybody that had been to do along? If you had any sort of. Um did you have a chance to chat with people that had been there before you went? No, I didn't know anyone who had been to do for long. I knew uh, my niece had gone to Who's at Sassnock and I a twin brother who had been to Miracle Haven about 12 years ago and hasn't picked a drink up since, so I knew that it definitely worked. So Miracle Haven, for the benefit of our listeners, was run by the Salvation Army. It was here on the coast, and again, it was... Um, well, for want of a better word, it was a rehab, but it was a treatment centre for people struggling with alcoholism. And he sounds as if he was a very successful graduate of that programme. Ah, uh, yeah, he definitely was, for sure. Yeah. Just going off a tangent uh, for a moment, Richard, you say he's your twin brother and he's also struggled with alcoholism. Yes, that's correct. Hmm. Does that make you wonder whether this is in your genes or inherited in some way? Um, or I believe it is... Uh, I had a grandfather and um, uncle who were both alcoholics, so I yeah. believe that, um, like in families. Yeah, yeah, particularly, as you say, your twin brother, um, and he fell prey to exactly the same, you know, temptations and demons that you fell prey to. It's um, Yes, that's right. It's one heck of a coincidence if it is just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah, de definitely. So he gave you the heads up and told you that salvos are a, you know, really good organisation. Miracle Haven's closed, so you found her along through your sister 
and you rang them, but now you've got this terrible six month wait. Ah, uh, yeah, I was um, what wasn't working, and um, but boredom's a bit of a killer for me. But um, to be honest, I had made my mind up not to drink under any circumstances. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I was uh, very successful, thank goodness. Yeah, and then come September uh, of this year, um, and yes, they got a place for you at Duralong. Uh, yeah, I'd be pretty apprehensive. I didn't know what to expect, but um, I've been there every few months now, and it's no, absolutely terrific. You say you didn't know what to expect. Our mind sort of conjures up pictures for us. What what sort of picture has your mind conjured up of a you know, of a rehab centre? I couldn't really picture what it would be like. To be honest, I um just uh, I knew it worked and. Yeah, but I didn't um, picture it as a, like... The five-star resort. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I've been calling it a rehab centre, and I know sometimes uh, some of the guys from the uh, Salvation Army, they don't like that uh, that, that, that phrase. It, they, they call it, don't they, a transformation centre, because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take your old life, uh, your old habits, uh, and transform them into something new. Ah, uh, yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, I'll slap my wrists and then in future start calling it <laughs> Transformation Centre and give it its full title. Look, we're going to break for some more music uh, here, Richard. We'll come back and we'll find out what's been happening for you since September uh, during your stay in Transformation Centre. He arrived there. Oh, he did tell me the exact date. It was at the beginning of December, wasn't it? Uh, in, September. Yes. That's right. So you've not been there a terribly long time. And you were saying earlier that you've just moved on to level two. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and partly for my benefit, and also the listeners, remind us of the levels. The, when you first start, is that level one when you first start? Uh, when you first start, it's four weeks of induction. Induction level, yeah. Um, and then you go to level one for nine weeks. And then So what does that nine weeks consist of? The nine weeks consists of um, the remainder of the steps after three, uh, it's one, two, three in induction, the steps of the 12 step program, and then the um, rest of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know whether listeners were listening around about quarter to 10 this morning. We were making the point, uh, Richard there has just been talking about the 12 step program, which is sort of the, um, the, the, the reasoning and the rationale behind the Alcoholics Anonymous program. It's a 12 steps program. Um, and we were mentioning, round about quarter to ten, that Bill Wilson, uh, the co-founder of the Alcoholics Anonymous, he actually took his very last drink and entered treatment for, for the very last time on this day in 1934, the 11th of December. So, yeah, significant day for Alcoholics Anonymous. So, when, when, uh, when Richard there was talking about these very steps, one to three, we are talking about the, the 12 steps program. And you're now in level two? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, and how's that going for you? Uh, it's going good. Uh, we're starting to look at things. Uh, this week we've been looking at um, partnerships and mm. how they have affected our lives. Yeah. So it's quite deep stuff, isn't it? I know you have to go to group sessions each morning and um, you have to sort of bear your soul. Do you find that difficult? And uh, initially I did find it a little bit difficult but then I realised I was with a heap of other blokes and mm. we've all got uh, the addiction problem so it was a lot easier to open up in front of them after that. Yeah and uh, I've said this before but there is that feeling of mutual support from the uh, from the people doing the programme isn't there? You're all, all in this together let's help each other as much as we can. Yeah definitely that's for sure. Yeah. So you've been there since September, things are going well, you're doing the uh, the steps of the programme. They also run other courses, don't they, do along like um, our anger management and things like this? Yeah, various other courses. Um, relapse prevention's a good one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, quite a few different ones. Relapse prevention, you mentioned that, but that's perhaps one that's really significant to you because you were telling us earlier that you have stopped quite a number of times. It's not the stopping that's the hard part for you, is it? It's the staying stopped that's the hard. You, you, you have relapses. 
So relapse prevention is going to be a pretty um, important one as far as you're concerned. Yeah, definitely, um, for myself. Yeah. Okay, so you've been at Duralong since September. Does that mean that you are now getting sort of weekend leave? I'm, I'm just thinking with Christmas coming up, where will you be spending Christmas, Richard? Yeah, it's all, um, I can have weekend leave now, but I haven't taken it. Um, not through uh, fear of picking up or anything. But um, Christmas time I'll be spending it with family. Yeah, yeah, because you're fairly local up from Maitland, so it would be nice to spend Christmas with family. Yeah, so it'll be nice to catch up with them. Yeah. You knew when you went to Duralong that it was run by the Salvation Army. You were very, very well aware of that. Um, you knew it was a spirit-based program, that they were going to treat not just your addiction, but your, 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 your physical body, your mental body, your emotional body, but also your spiritual body. Yes, that's correct. So, it comes to the Wednesday, your very first Wednesday, chapel night quite full on for somebody who's not used to that sort of style of worship yeah i had um i have been to church on and off over the years but yeah this was a, a bit different um a lot more modern than the yeah. traditional type churches yeah you were telling me earlier that you um had a very traditional um perhaps in inverted commas strict uh, Catholic um, upbringing when you were a child, so you, you 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 were used to church, but it was it was a more formal approach to um, Christianity. Ah, uh, yeah, that's dead right, dear. Um, the Catholic uh, church was pretty strict, but yeah, um, very very different to your first chapel night. Oh, definitely yes. <laughs> uh, but the concepts of uh, of God and Christ and forgiveness, they were concepts that were familiar to you. Uh, yeah, it was more of, um, but now um, I've, I've got a belief in a higher power, Yeah. Um, which is easier for me. Yeah, that helps you with this 12 Steps program as well, doesn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, that's a big one where the 12 Steps are involved. You have to acknowledge to yourself that you are helpless without the aid of this higher power that we call God. Uh, yeah, yeah, I certainly can't do it can't myself. Do it. Yeah, you've tried and you failed Richard to do it on your own so you do need that higher power you do need God don't you ah yeah I yeah. failed miserably myself <laughs> yeah yeah I wasn't going to say that but, <laughs> but yeah yeah I'm glad you said that um so you're now going to one of the local Salvation Army churches which one do you go to I go to Tugger Lakes yeah for somebody who's been brought up as a strict Catholic, um, again, that would be very strange to you because there wouldn't be the liturgy and the formality and the pomp and ceremony of it all. It would be much more freer and open and um, fluid, I would imagine. Uh, yes, it's a um, lot different and a um, lot, lot more comfortable for myself. Yeah. In, in what way? Do you just feel more comfortable there? Yeah, I when I first went there, I felt very welcome, and um, they're all aware of um, addiction out there and understand what we're going through, really. So, yeah, it's, um, they're all very helpful. Yeah, no judgment. No, no, no judgment at all. Yeah, because I think a lot of people who aren't churchgoers would have the impression that Christians or church goes would in some way sort of almost look down their nose at people who are struggling with addictions and sort of sort of preach a little bit towards them. Most people who go to church know that nothing can be further from the truth, but, but for those who don't go to church or haven't been for a long time like you, Richard, you might have thought there would have been a little bit of um, judging going on, but you say that's not the case. No, definitely not. Um, there are people who judge, I have no doubt, but... Um, I understand it too. They don't understand the um, the power of that addiction has over you. Yeah, it's not that you don't want to give up drink. It's sort of it's it's an addiction. Ah uh, yes, yeah. You know, it's a disease of the mind. It, it is definitely. It's not a matter of choice. Otherwise, you would have stopped years and years and years ago. I, I wish I bucket list. And um, what's number one on your bucket list for further down the track, Richard? What do you want to do? Uh, I want to fit, do my 10 months at Duva along and then just I've been starting to get a few ideas what I'm doing after, which one would um, definitely be to go to Cape York. Yeah, Richard with his driving background, it's going to have to be a big four-wheel, isn't it? Four-wheel yeah. 
drive. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, just head off. You say you've been to Cooktown, but this time you want to reach the very top. Ah, uh, definitely, yes. Yeah. How long has that been a dream of yours, Richard? Oh, as long as I can remember. Yeah. Quite a while. But you've never had the opportunity to do it in the past? Um, no, not really. So, yeah. So when we usually ask guys what their hopes and dreams are for the future, um, you've already done a little bit of thought to that, and that's that's obviously not employment, but it's, yeah, it would be a significant achievement for you. Yeah, it certainly would. Oh, send us a postcard. I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Um, as far as employment and life after Duralong, I, I'm thinking to myself, look, you've only been at Duralong since September. Uh, you probably got a good few more months to go, so you probably haven't made any definite plans yet, have you? No, nothing. Um, I am getting a forklift ticket shortly, but no definite plans just at the moment. Just wait and see how things go and um, just take it s slowly. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I don't want to rush into anything and uh, make another mistake. No. And the most important thing is stopping and staying stopped, isn't it? Yes. Everything that's else e takes second place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Family-wise, um, how are things with your family? Are they supportive of you? Uh, yeah, I'm very lucky that way. I've got a very um, supportive family. So when you do eventually leave Duralong, would you, are the family members that you'll be able to sort of go back to? Uh, yeah, I'm going back to live around the area where all uh, the family is and I'll have a lot of support. Yeah, that's really important to you. It, it is, very much so. And your twin brother, who has been clean now for a long, long time, not touched any alcohol for a long, long time, um, he must be quite proud of his twin brother. Yeah, um, well, I was certainly proud of him when he um, went through Miracle Haven, so yeah. but vice versa. Yeah, because he will know what you're going through, won't he? Yes, he, yeah. He's done it himself. Yes. So he'll be able to support you and give you words of encouragement. Ah, uh, yes. Also, um, I've got a niece who went through who's at Cessnock and, yeah, she's um, doing very well nowadays. Yeah. So there are success stories with alcohol in your family? Definitely, yes, yeah. So we just need to add Richards to that page of success stories. I want to be on top of the list. <laughs> you want to be on top of the list? Yeah. What are you going to do for Christmas, Richard? Are you going um, to do a long or you're off to see family? Yeah, I'm just going back to um, all stay with mum and then we go to my sister and brother-in-law's Christmas day and, yeah, it'll be just a nice uh, family get-together. A get nice, quiet family Christmas. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Your mum must be proud of you after many, many years of her worrying for you through all these sort of ups and downs that you have. To now know that you're at Duralong, you're in a good, safe place, working hard for recovery, she must be proud of her son. Uh, yeah, but very proud. Um, there's been years of disappointment, but I'm uh, trying to turn it around. It'll take a long time, but I know I can do it. You can do it with God's help? Definitely, yes. Yeah. And we just do pray, Richard. Well, we thank you for coming and sharing with us this morning. But we do pray that God will give you the strength um, and give you all the tools and techniques through the Salvation Army that are necessary, not just to stop, but to, as you've put it earlier, to stay stopped um, so that you're never sort of um, a slave to this, this disease of addiction ever again. We pray that in the name of Christ into your life, Richard. Thanks very much. Give all our best to the guys back at Duralong. Enjoy your chapel night tonight. It'll be chicken or lamb or beef. Do you know in advance what you're getting or is it I'm, just potluck? I'm not sure at this stage, but it'll be nice whatever. It'll be nice whatever. And you'll have a great time, uh, uh, an energy-filled time of worship as well. Yes, we do. Yes, we certainly do. Thank you, Richard, for coming in. Have a great Christmas and continue with your recovery. Thanks very much. You've been listening to an encore presentation of the Duralong Stories, which can be heard live every Wednesday at 10am and repeated 8pm Sunday and 1am Wednesday, right here on 94.9 rima.cc.